One of the biggest issues and bugbears, I guess, for most people is passwords. As a IT support person, we have to do a lot of password resets. I guess I probably do two, three password resets a week. And that's sometimes because people forget them, which is easily done, I guess. There's a lot of passwords we have out there. People don't use password managers, so they do have to remember them and therefore they go and forget them. Or maybe someone goes on holiday and doesn't set out of office and then somebody else says, can you log in and set out of office and therefore we have to do a password reset on that. So all of this is showing that really passwords don't really work too well. They are a faff and a hassle and none of us want to deal with them. There's been talk for years and years about when we're going to get to a passwordless world. And the good news is that Microsoft have introduced passwordless login for a Microsoft account. This is something that's going to help take the first sort of steps towards that because what it means is you're going to be able to log into Windows 10 without using a password. And I'm going to show you this now using a virtual machine as an example of how this gets set up and I'll take you through that and how that actually works and what it means to not use a password. Now in this video I'm not going to show you how to go into the Microsoft account and switch on the passwordless feature but I am going to do a separate video that goes through that because it's a very quick setting and I can do a very quick video that takes you how to do that but at this point we're going to assume that you've already gone into your Microsoft account online and there's a toggle switch under security and you set it to use passwordless login and now we're going to go through what happens when you use passwordless login to log into Windows 10 with your Microsoft account. Right here is a Windows 10 machine. What we're going to do now is go down here to the start button and go up into the settings and in the settings you've got your account section and family and other users and this is where you can add someone else to the computer and this is where you can add your Microsoft account onto the machine. Now I'm working here on an account that's not as part of a business organization. It's not part of a domain. This is a Windows machine that you might buy for your use it's a Windows Home machine really is what it is. I mean, it happens to be an enterprise evaluation that I'm using, but I'm not setting it up inside of a domain here. It's not connected to Active Directory or Azure or anything like that. This is Windows as you might find it if you just go online and buy yourself a laptop with Windows 10 on it. So what I'm going to do is add myself my account here. Uh, and I can see that what I've got is US keyboard set up on there. So I'm going to add my account here, Kyle at Kimberly.com. And that's all you have to do to add it because then it says right next time you log in you're going to go through this process so if we sign out of this user and we'll go back to the login screen and we can see exactly what happens at this point so the next thing that happens is i'll choose carl at and i'll click on sign in now normally this is where you'd put in your microsoft password for this account and of course that's the problem we've got a password there but now we're not going to have that happen it's going to come up with something different now that's going to come up on the screen it's going to ask me to send a notification to my phone. Now, I've already set up my phone with Microsoft Authenticator, and this is part of how you set up passwordless login. I've set it up with Microsoft Authenticator so that when I click send notification, it's going to send a notification to my mobile phone. Now, that's going to come up on the screen now, and we can see yeah, new sign in request for Microsoft Authenticator on my phone. So I'll open the Authenticator app on my phone. And I can see there it says I've got a new sign in request and on my phone it's saying which of the three numbers is shown on the screen. Well on the screen we've got 64 so I'll click on 64 on my phone and approve that login. And now I get a second level of authentication because it's asking me to put my screen lock password in onto the phone too. That then authenticates me to log in. Now, that means I haven't had to use a password, which means it's not online, it's not stored anywhere, and nobody can hack or steal that password, and that's the whole purpose of this. However, you will note on the screen now it's asking me to create a PIN. Now the reason it's going to ask me to create a PIN is so I don't have to go through that process with my phone every time I log in. All I have to do is type in the PIN, which I've created there. I've done a four-digit PIN because that's more than secure enough for the local login on your Windows computer. Now here's the real difference, as you can see, it's logging us into Windows now. The real difference is that PIN code is stored on this local computer. It's not stored online anywhere. It's only on my virtual machine in this case here, or it might be on your laptop or your local PC, but it isn't stored anywhere else. And that makes it very, very difficult for someone to hack because it's not stored in a database online. It can't be hacked by criminals and put in a password breach. It's only on your machine. 
um, which is pretty secure. I mean, it, you know, much, much more secure than using a weak password. And that's the whole point of this passwordless login. It's taking away the stress of having to think of a password. You tend to use passwords that are your partner's name or football club or favorite colors and things like that because it's hard to remember all these different words. Yes, you can use a password manager, but you can't use a password manager when you get to the login screen of Windows unless you actually get your phone out and have a look at it. And of course, that's a hassle for people, so they don't do that. So they use a weak password, and so we get into this problem. And that's why this password login, passwordless login, is really good on Windows 10. I'll go through some of the stuff that's on here and get rid of this. And then I can show you an example of that now when we go log back in. There we go. Right, we're just about to finish getting into Windows here because this is an evaluation edition. And so it's never been set up before. So it just goes through all the default stuff. But if I sign out of that account now here on this machine and we'll have another look at what we come up with when we start and click on the screen. We've so got the original user that was logged in with no password. And here's my account. And there we go. It's got a pin. And I can put that pin now and I log into Windows and it doesn't ask me to get my phone out. But that pin isn't stored online anywhere. And therefore now I'm logged in with my Windows account, but I'm really secure and it's really easy to do because all I have to do is remember a four digit code. There it is, passwordless login to Windows 10. And I kind of like it because it's taking a step in the right direction and it's moving away from having to need to know a password, particularly when you actually come into log into the computer, into Windows 10 itself. So that's a good thing now. You can secure it with the authenticator and then you have the pin code that can't be hacked. And that takes you to a sort of passwordless world. It wasn't exactly passwordless, and I'm sure you'll pull me up on that one with the pin. So it's not quite exactly no password at all. You've still got to know this pin number. But I reckon it's much easier to know a four-digit pin number than it is to remember a password. And, a con and of course, a password that's complex, you know, that's a combination of letters and numbers and things like that, which is why the four-digit pin's better. But what really sets it apart is that that four-digit pin isn't anywhere online for someone to use it and hack into it. It's only available on your computer and therefore can only be used by someone who's at your computer. And really, if you're working from home, as a lot of people are now, then that makes that pretty damn secure because only people in your house can get access to it. And even if you're in an office, it's still pretty secure because you've only, got, again, got the people that are inside the building who've got access to this stuff. And that's why it's a good step in this direction. You can do passwordless login as well with Google, but only if you've got a consumer account. So I'm hoping Google will bring that to Google Workspace pretty soon. It's a sweet feature. I log in on my personal uh, Gmail account and I just get the little notification on my phone from Google. Is that you? Yes. And it logs me in. And that's super nice. And I don't have to know my password for my Google account as well. And that's one more thing I'd like to do because at the moment I use a password manager and things like that for people when I log in into Chrome to help them so they can have a good password. They can have two factor authentication and then they can use the password manager so they don't have to remember that good password on their Google account. And that would be good to do. I'm going to do another video uh, this week, which is about how to actually switch on and off the passwordless authentication in your Microsoft account and how to enable two-factor authentication, i.e. get your Microsoft account onto the Microsoft Authenticator on your phone. But I thought first I would just take you through the process of what passwordless login look like so you get a feel for how that is. And that's what this video is about. This has been helpful. It'd be great for James and I if you would do the usual stuff that people do on YouTube, which is like our video, maybe put a comment on it and subscribe to the Kimberly IT channel because we're trying to grow this thing. It's helpful for people generally in business to have better IT because there's so many criminals out there that are trying to steal from us that the, the more we do together, the better it's going to be. And it helps James and I grow our own channel, which is our own business. We're two people. We're trying to grow a business for ourselves and our families. And it would be really appreciated if you subscribe to this kind of stuff because it just means the algorithm pushes it out to more people and they get to see us and it's going to help us develop this business, which we believe is doing an ethical and good thing and trying to, you know, we're an ethical capitalist, you might put on that side of things. We're trying to do good things and make a few quid at the same time for our own family. So that would be appreciated. Anyway, I will stop rambling on and I'll see you on the next video. Ta-da.